Dear friends, in this series of lectures, we will be learning about the Old Testament prophets and their prophetical books. I am Genevieve and I will be your instructor for this course. Before we begin with the prophetical books, let us take a look at the structure of the Jewish Old Testament. The Jewish Old Testament is called Tanakh, constitutes of 24 books which are classified into three major sections. The first is Torah, the second is Nebim or Nevim, the third is Ketubim. Torah is the set of the books of law. The word Torah means teaching. It is also called Pentateuch in the Greek language which means five scrolls. It consists of the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. The second section is the Nebim or the Nevim, which is the section of the prophets. This section has two major divisions, the former and the latter prophets. The former prophets consists of four books, Joshua, Judges, Samuel as one book and Kings as one book. The latter prophets consists of 15 books. This is further divided into two parts, the major and the minor prophets. The major prophets comprises of three books, Isaiah, Jeremiah and Ezekiel. The minor prophets or the 12 is one book with 12 prophetic writings. These are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah and Malachi. The third section is Ketubim or the sacred writings. This consists of 11 books, Psalms, Proverbs, Job, Song of Solomon, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel, Ezra and Nehemiah as one book and Chronicles as one book. Now let us look at the definition of a prophet. According to Robert Milligan, a prophet is the one who under the influence of the Holy Spirit speaks the words and thoughts of God whether they relate to the past or to the present or to the future. Let me repeat this uh, definition once again. According to Robert Milligan, a prophet is the one who under the influence of the Holy Spirit speaks the words of and thoughts of God, whether they relate to the past, to the present or to the future. In simple words, a prophet is the one who speaks on behalf of God. He is the messenger of God or he is the spokesperson of God. According to Haley, there are six descriptive terms or designations found in the Bible for a prophet. That is prophet, seer, son of God, servant of God, messenger of Yahweh, watchman or and sorry the preacher of righteousness. There are three Hebrew words used for a prophet or a seer in the Old Testament. These words are Nabi which means to call, Roe which means to see, Jose which means to see. According to these three words, the prophet therefore was the one who is called by God and can see the hidden and the secretive things of the past, present and the future as God revealed to them. Therefore, they spoke the message given by God and that usually started with the words this is what the Lord says or thus says the Lord. In this course, we will be studying about the Old Testament prophets. In other words, we will be studying the latter prophets from the Nebim section. Let us now look at the significance of the prophets. Prophets played a very important role in the history as they were links between God and people. Before the monarchy, God would choose and raise one individual to lead and mediate for the people. 
let us look at the classification of the prophets according to those who have written books and those who do not have written books we have two uh, parts in this the first one is the preliterary or the oral prophets these are the prophets with no prophetic book credited to them example noah enoch those belong to the antediluvian period and nathan samuel elijah elisha etc the second category is the literary or the writing prophets these are those pro those prophets who have books credited to them or who have books written by them these are the major and the minor prophets with the end of the period of judges began the period of monarchy with the beginning of monarchy there was a rise of prophets samuel was the last judge and also the first prophet he was called the seer god raised up prophets to deal with injustices inequalities and corruption in the monarchical period there are two kinds of messages spoken by the prophets first the foretelling and second forth telling forth telling is the declaration of future events as revealed by the lord pertaining specially to the kingdom of god second one is forth telling forth telling is to utter forth declare the things which can only be known by divine revelation these are about the issues in their society majorly therefore they spoke in three areas political social and religious there has always been a deep curiosity to know about the future and the will of god among the people and this desire led them to foretellers in every society these foretellers try to reveal future by means of various practices like divination augury soothsaying oracles spiritism witchcraft sorcery and necromancy and many other ways many bands of prophets also existed and associated with high places in the old testament times but with the rise of monarchy they entered into the courts and acted as advisers to the kings bringing forth the word from yahweh and doing miracles drawing the authority from yahweh the prophets of the 8th 7th 6th and the post exilic period were considered to be direct messengers from god their messages were 70% foretelling and only 30% foretelling now let us look at the genuine marks of a prophet we have three genuine marks of a prophet which actually talk tell us about the call of the prophets whether they are truly called by god or not the first genuine mark of a prophet is the awareness of the divine initiative in their call which means that it is god who should call them who should take the initiative of calling them and the prophet should be aware of that the second one is an experience of the divine presence which means the prophet should have a divine experience at the time of his call the third one is the realization of one's own spiritual inadequacy which means when the prophet is called he should realize that he is nothing before god he is a sinful person and god is exalted and far above everything these are the three marks that signify a true prophet after the death of king solomon the kingdom of israel was divided into two parts the northern kingdom which was called israel and the southern kingdom which was called juda throughout the monarchical era the inequality and the gap between the rich and the poor increased due to the increased corruption oppression and exploitation of the poor and the marginalized as the high priests were emphasizing on the sacrifices in the temple and promises blessings if these were followed the prophets emphasized on the other three strands of the society usually the messages of the prophets were associated with three strands of the society these were the social sins 
These were the injustices made to the poor and the marginalized. The second strand was the political sins. These talk about the alliances that the kings of Israel made with the foreign powers instead of trusting in Yahweh. The third strand was religious sins. These were the sins of apostasy and idolatry. Let us now look at the difference between the Canaanite and the Israelite prophets. The Israelite prophets supported true faith in Yahweh and called the leaders and the people back to the covenant. Whereas the Canaanites supported the cult or worship in their temples. Israelite rejected the practices of charging fee for their services as this would be seen as prostitution of God's gift. Whereas the Canaanites charged fees for their services. We see that Israelite prophets refused to join with the bands of prophets who considered prophecy as a profession to earn their livelihood. Whereas we see the Canaanite prophets associating themselves with bands of prophets and were called professionals who made livelihood out of it. Then we see that the Israelite prophets simply prophesied the message and said that thus says the Lord or these are the words of God. Whereas we see that the Canaanite bands of prophets used aids like musical instruments to help them to prophesy. Many even prophesied only in the state of ecstasy. Now let us look at the three ways of communication which the prophets used. Firstly, the oracles. Oracles are the messages received by prophets directly from God and these prophets express these messages in the same words as God spoke to them saying, Thus says the Lord. The second type of communication which the prophets used were using parables or allegories. Parables are stories to teach spiritual lessons. Allegories are detailed stories with many points but with one purpose. We see the example of parables in Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 to 7. We see over there the song of a vineyard. The third way of communication used by the prophets is the symbolic action or acted parable. We have seen many times that the prophets of the Old Testament behaved very weirdly. Let us see some examples. Jeremiah hiding his loincloth. Hosea's marriage, Isaiah walking naked, Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, etc. Till now, we were looking at the true prophets. Now, let us also take a look at the false prophets. Who were these false prophets? Along with the true messengers of God, we also read about false prophets in the Bible. We will look at the types and the tests of false prophets. We basically have five types of false prophets. First, prophets of false religion. Second, ministers of God in name only, teaching the doctrines of men. Third, mercenaries and self-seeking preachers. Fourth, mediums or persons possessed with lying spirits. Fifth, self-deceived persons taking their own ideas as from God's Spirit. Now let us look at the tests of false prophets. We, how do we recognize whether the prophet is true or false? So let us look at six ways or six tests by which we can recognize whether the prophet is true or false. First test is, is there recognition of Jesus Christ? We have to know whether the prophet recognizes Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Second test is, is the message in agreement with the Bible? The message of the prophet should never disagree with the Bible. The third test is, is there fulfillment of their predictions? We have to know whether what they are prophesying is fulfilling or not, or whether it is coming to pass or not. Fourth is the prophecy given for the strengthening of the church or not. The prophecies are meant to edify the church, to edify, to strengthen the church. If not, 
it may not be a true prophecy fifth is the prophet subject to the church leaders it is very important that the prophets are subject to the church leaders because we know that the spirit of the prophet is under their control sixth test is does the prophet's life follow biblical patterns this is a very important test we have to study the life of the prophets and know whether these prophets are following the biblical patterns or not this is all for the first a lecture on the prophetical books we will meet again with the historical section or the historical background relating with the prophetical books thank you bye for now